If you've ever been in the military and while working, somebody came in and asked for two bodies and you immediately evaded or somehow hid so that you didn't have to do a working party, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Like, comment, do all those things that help me out quite a bit. Comment section is out of control. We're just going to let it kind of roll and do its thing. Guys, lots of ways to support, ways to support me. Um, one of our biggest new supporters is Gun Mag Warehouse. Uh, they're doing some really cool stuff for me. Uh, we got some really sick videos coming along from them. So check them out for all your gun mag needs and all that kind of stuff. They rock. If you're looking to get some sweet plaid, we have Vertex. Discount code Grantham, 25% off. Works for anything on Vertex. Finally, ammunition. LAX, Freedom Munitions. Get whichever one works. Grantham, no spaces. Gets you discount. Make, allows you to get more ammo and all that kind of crap. So get in there, guys, and do all that good stuff. So with those things being said, let's talk about the video that we're doing today. So we're talking about the CZ75 SP01. Tactical, always tactical, right guys? <laughs> Never normal. So uh, the CZ-75, if you're not aware, is a handgun that has been around for quite a long time. Um, it's battle proven, it's proven by time. Uh, they're well vetted in combat and in roles all throughout the world. So I'm not here to question uh, how good of a handgun it is because it's already been proven. Uh, but what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna compare this particular firearm and this particular variant against some more modern offerings like the Glock 19, and some classic offerings like the Browning High Power, and we'll kind of see kind of where it falls and why you might choose this handgun over something else. And we'll also talk about a little pros and cons and kind of my experiences shooting it and using it so far. So that being said, let's kind of get into it. Now you guys kind of know how I do this. I have pros and cons, and cons are always going to come in during the pros because um, sometimes you can't mention a pro without also mentioning a con. So uh, let's get into that. Now, as far as my relationship goes with CZ, um, you know, they gave me this gun free to review and all that kind of stuff. I'm not paid or anything like that. I used um, ammo sponsorships through LAX and Freedom to use ammo for this. That's pretty much my go-to nowadays. This particular gun has around 4,000 rounds on it. I've got another CZ-75 that has 8,000 rounds on it. Um, I feel like that get, puts me at a good comfortable position to talk more about this firearm. Um, do I want to put more on this? Yeah, I want to get like 50,000 rounds on this thing, but we're not there on ammo budget yet, but maybe we'll be there someday. Someday. So until then, uh, let's kind of talk about my experiences so far using it. So first off, the one thing I do want to say about the CC75 and the SP01 straight off the bat is how ergonomic it is. It just feels good in the hand. Um, so when you take a look at the grip angle, the grip angle is a little bit more shallow compared to the Glock 19. Now there are kind of pros and cons to that, and the you know pro to that is that when I'm bringing this gun up onto target, it's just a very natural position for my wrist, and I can just simply bring it on. I don't have to kind of you know can't my wrist down or anything crazy like that. So it's just really simple to put it on the target. Now at the same time, the more aggressive angle on the Glock 19 also aids in recoil control. So you kind of lose a little bit of that with the SP01, but because of some other little factors here, it really makes up for it. It makes it, it's just better than the 19 when it comes to recoil control for a variety of reasons, including the um, fact that it weighs a, a, a lot. But <laughs> with those things kind of not being said, um, let's talk about the grip for a second here. So. I'm going to try not to gush too much about the grip, but I really like the grip panels on the CZ75 SP01. So they're kind of, they're rubberized, they're kind of grippy, they're not too aggressive, and they have uh, little contours on them that kind of contour around your hand. Now for my hands, I have pretty average sized man hands. Um, they just feel great on, on my particular uh, hands, and the grip just feels good to me. You know, compare that to something like the 19, which actually kind of feels like a more fatter, kind of less uh, ergonomic grip. Um, it's a real pleasure to hold the 75. Now, the Glock 19 is not bad. I'm very used to, to holding and shooting the 19 and all that kind of stuff, but the CZ75 SP01 just feels good. And what contributes to that as well is the fit. So the really interesting thing about the CZ75 models is that compared to other guns, um, the slide rides over the frame. This is the way it is. So. No big deal, that, that works really well. But on the CZ75, they always have to do things weird. Um, they have the slide riding inside the frame. Now because of that, I'm able to get my thumbs really high. I'm able to get a really high grip on that gun. And some people would call that bore access, you know, the height of the barrel above where my grip is, specifically on the gun, or the, you know, the height of the barrel above the gun and all that kind of stuff. So because of that, I'm just able to get really high on that gun and really control it. What that means is I have a really interesting recoil impulse every time I pull that trigger and send a slug down the barrel. 
because the 19, um, you know, you got all that mass kind of reciprocated on top. Now, the 19 is very light, but with the SP01, you have so much weight on it, and every time you're pulling that trigger, um, it's just really interesting because you got a lot of weight kind of moving back and forth, but because your grip's so high, because the grip angle's so good, and because that kind of barrel's so low into the, uh, into the gun, it, it just, you can just feel that thing reciprocating. You can just watch the side reciprocating in your kind of vision, and you're going to get pretty much no muzzle rise. Now, I've seen some videos of people you know, shooting this gun, and it's like kind of flipping up. Um, if you have any type of modern grip on this gun, this thing is not going anywhere. And that's something that's kind of hard to quantify. And every time you're pulling that trigger and you're just sending a you know, slug down that barrel, it just feels good. And that's something that's kind of hard to quantify when I'm reviewing guns, is to tell you guys kind of how it feels to shoot them. Um, but the CZ SP01 Tactical just... It just feels good every time I'm firing it. It just lends itself well to really just firing quickly and that type of thing because there's so little muzzle rise and it's just very controllable. It, you can just really track where you're sending those rounds down range. And because of that, um, a lot of people, when they fire the SP01, they say, wow, this is a really accurate handgun. And, you know, yeah, there are some handguns that are more accurate than others. Um, but for the most part, it comes down to the shooter. It comes down to you because you're a very unstable platform. A pistol's fine. A pistol's pretty accurate. But um, it just lends itself to really putting the rounds where you want to put them on this gun. So I've, it's been a real pleasure to put as many rounds as I have to this particular firearm. And it's kind of growing on me despite kind of the fact that I didn't want to like it that much uh, for a variety of reasons when I first got it. Now, here's the thing, though, is, yeah, the you're able to get a really high grip, but the problem is, is that if you need to do any type of slide manipulation, you have very little to grab onto. So compare that to something like the Glock 19. Um, you know, there's a lot of slide to grab onto to do any type of manipulation work and that type of stuff. Now with the CZ75 SP01, I have like this little kind of portion I have to grab onto in order to actuate. And you can see how thin that is. It's just not a whole lot of space that I have to work with right there. So, you know, when I'm doing malfunction drills and that type of stuff, um, it's something to be aware of and something that you'll need to work through to make sure that you're familiar with this particular firearm. Um, I'm probably making this out to be a bigger deal than it is, but it is something to be aware of with this particular handgun. So there's that. Regarding the sights that come with the gun, they're true dot night sights. Um, they feel great. Some people like fiber optic and blacked out rears. Um, so do I, but these sights are more than adequate. Um, they're easy to use, they're a good size, all that type of stuff. They're a good size for most distances that you're going to be shooting at, so no big deal there. Good to go. Um, the standard magazine that these come with are 18 rounders. Um, pretty awesome. Uh, Glock 17, 17 round. Of course, this is a little bit larger than a Glock 17. But at the same time, I like that 18 plus 1 capacity. So you have 18 in the mag plus 1 in the gun in the chamber. Um, that's a lot of rounds. So that's good to go. Um, little base plates that come with them are great. They're easy to work with and draw from magazine pouches and that type of thing. Um, I'm a fan of them. They work well. They're not too expensive either, which is always um, an issue. Now, they're not as cheap as like a Glock 19 mag, but at the same time, you know, does it take Glock mags? No. One quick note about the grip is um, it's grippy, but it's not too aggressive. So if you've been shooting like all day, you'll find that with like stippling that you have on like a Glock 19 that I have done here from Landers Weapon Systems is really good, um, but it can kind of be a little abrasive over time. Now some people are like, oh, it's cutting up my hand. Well, I mean, yeah, if you got soy boy hands, that makes sense, but you know, that hasn't been an issue for me. But with the CZ75 SP01, it's just, I don't have any of that kind of grating feeling ever on my hands and my hands are never really sore after I'm done shooting it through for a day. So just nice to shoot. I'm just a big fan of it. Um, the trigger on this is interesting. So triggers are hard to describe to you guys, and I'm going to do my best here. But you have several factors. You have the take up, the break, and the reset that kind of make the gun. So the take up is, is how far I have to pull the trigger until I hit that wall, the point at which I'm about to release the hammer. You have that, that point at which I drop the hammer, and then you have the reset, which is going to be after the slide cycles, how far I have to let that trigger forward until I'm able to pull that trigger again and drop the hammer again. So on this particular gun, the single action stage of it is a really nice short take up and then it's a crisp wall once I hit it. Let's compare that to something like the Glock 19, which is an apples to oranges comparison because the Glock 19 is a striker fired gun versus a hammer fired gun. But nonetheless, you have about the same amount of take up between the two. But the Glock 19 is a real mushy kind of trigger. Now compare that with a Browning High Power, right? So you have a short take up, 
a really crisp let off. So the Browning High Power does have a nicer trigger than the CZ75, and then something like a 1911 just blows all these out of the water. So we're not going to bring that up, but of course the 1911 has other issues. But um, it is a nice trigger. The double action pull on this is not bad at all. A lot of people talk about grip, um, you know, the actual trigger weight. And I don't think trigger weight is a really good way to quantify a trigger because I pulled a Glock 19 with a 4.5 pound trigger in it. <clears throat> it felt like shit compared to like a Geise trigger in an AR-15. So it's mostly about the design of the trigger that matters. So that's kind of the hard thing to describe to you guys. But the trigger pull, the take up is smooth. The wall is crisp. It feels good. The reset on this gun is a little bit longer than I'd like. So there's a reset right there before I can drop the hammer again. Compare that to something like the Glock 19, which just has an amazing reset. Just has a really tactile reset. You can feel it in your trigger finger every time you're, you're hitting that reset. And this, it's kind of harder to feel. Now, no matter what, it's still gonna be better than the Browning High Power. Browning High Power has a terrible reset. But in any case, the trigger is really good. Now, this particular model, the Tactical, um, it doesn't have a safety, it has a decocker. So this is their military model, so it has a decocker instead of a safety. Is that that big of a deal? Um, I think it works well for me uh, in a military application, in a duty application. That might be kind of a game break, you know, a deal breaker for some people. Not for me. So anyhow, you know, you load it, you put your mag in, all that kind of stuff. Then you go ahead and you hit the decocker. So then on that first shot, much like a Breda 92 or a, a M9, take that first shot in double action. After that first double action shot, then everything else after that is going to be single action and all that good stuff. So it works for me. It's infinitely better than the M9 with its terrible slide mounted controls and all that kind of crap. So th this particular model works well for me. And also the decocker works on the right hand side as well. The left, it is ambi. However, the slide stop is only uh, left sided. So not that big of a deal. I'm right handed, but it could be a deal breaker if you're a left handed dude and you're some weirdo and you're shooting, you know, wrong side and all that type of stuff. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the slide stop breaking on the CZ-75. Um, I think it's an overblown issue. It's definitely there, right? It definitely happens, no doubt. There are plenty of reports um, that you can see online of people breaking slide stops. Um, if anything, keep the points uh, greased and then have one on hand. Replace it every 20,000 rounds. You're probably going to be fine. Um, the trigger spring. So there has been talk about the trigger springs breaking. So... This gun, well, according to Cajun Gunworks, who is kind of like the premier CZ-75 SPO one kind of um, custom deal, they do all that trigger work and all that type of stuff. Um, this gun is meant to be fired like 90% single action, 10% of the time double action. So if you're just sitting there, just kind of cranking away on that double action trigger the entire time, yeah, you're gonna start damaging that trigger spring a lot faster than if you're firing this gun properly, which is going to be single action, which is how it was meant to be fired. So when you're doing your practice, just keep that kind of stuff in mind. It is still important to fire double action to practice that first draw and that first shot, but still, you know, most of your practice should be in single action, you know, feeling that reset and that type of stuff. So keep those things in mind. On this gun, you do have front rails. Um, you want to mount, you know, PEC 15. Just kidding, you want to mount, you know, light, all that kind of stuff, you can do that here. Um, you have front serrations here. You also have the top is machine, that way you don't have any type of glare. Never had that issue with a pistol, but um, I'm sure it would come into play at some point or another. So that the, it is really nicely machined. I want to point that out. They did a really good job with the finish and all that type of stuff on it. I haven't had any problems with rust or corrosion or anything like that. It's just a nice looking handgun is what it comes down to. So overall, it's a great pistol to fire. Now let's talk about cons. So this gun is heavy. It's super heavy. And yeah, that soaks up recoil and everything, but it's three pounds loaded. Dude, that's, that's freaking heavy, man. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. So it kind of comes down to application. You know, what are you going to be doing with this handgun? Are you military slash contractor and you've got an M4, you know, whatever, some type of primary weapon? This is going to be a backup. There's a lot of weight to carry for a backup. Now, your police officer, um, you know, in some duty where your main weapon is going to be your handgun, a CZ-75 SPL1 Tactical is actually a, probably a really good option. It can really just control that recoil, get down into the gun, that type of stuff. So there's definitely an application for it. You just need to kind of find out where you sit. Um, obviously, if you're a competition shooter, this gun is just crushing it, right? You see these at competitions everywhere. They're taking, um, you know, winning titles and all that kind of stuff. They just do really well. But again, it comes down to your application and what you're going to be using it for. So there is a place. Just be aware of that weight. Um, and the other thing was the slide. 
with slide manipulation. So we talked about that before. It's just kind of hard to manipulate the slide and I'm kind of splitting hairs, but this is a good handgun. It has a place. Just realize, um, you know, you need to find out if it's good for you. So my best advice to you would be go to a gun range, you know, hold it, hold the Glock 19, which are my two kind of guns I typically recommend to you guys and kind of see what works for you, what feels good and fire them both and see what's, what's going to work. You know, everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's hands, everybody's ergonomics are going to be just different. So you're going to have to find what's kind of specific to you. Now, that being said, no matter how different you are, the Springfield XD is never the handgun for you. So never pick a Springfield XD and never let a friend pick a Springfield XD. If they do, you need to set them straight. Quick note. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. Um, if you have any questions, get down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm going to be home for the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to be much more um, responsive and attentive, unlike your father. So let me be in your life and all that kind of stuff. Guys, if you're looking for training, um, Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Gray Hive, Esoteric, get in there, get that training, that stuff matters. And uh, I've got nothing else for you guys. Okay, I've got something else for you guys. Um, not relationship advice, funny enough, uh, not today. Uh, it's going to be about dry fire. So everybody, when they're doing dry fire practice, you know, they get their gun, they bring it up, and they pull the trigger, and they're like, yeah, that was a good shot, I'm pretty sure. Bring it back down, you know, drop in the holster, fire again. But so few people uh, work the reset. So everybody's always asking me, how do I become a quicker shooter? And what that's going to come down to is practicing that reset. So knowing uh, how far you need to let that finger forward before you're able to pull that trigger and get a bang again. And everybody wants to get that bang. So bring your gun up, pull that trigger, pull the slide, and then feel to that reset and then pull the trigger again. The big thing is, is a lot of people will pull the trigger and then feel that reset and get that reset. And they're like, okay, now I'm ready to fire. Bang, crushed it. But if you're firing rapid fire, when you're hitting that reset, you're just going to be immediately dropping that hammer again. So really practice drop coming to that reset and then immediately pulling that trigger again. Don't kind of you know hang off the trigger once you've gotten that reset. Work that quick manipulation. You're going to get better that much faster. Hope that's helpful for you guys. Again, appreciate you guys so much. Um, we're going places, guys. We're doing a lot of cool things coming up here in the next little bit. We got MP7s, UMPs, M249s, some cool stuff. And as always, I'm going to do my nice in-depth reviews for you guys. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. Um, I kind of love you guys a little bit. A little bit. Most of the time. Sometime, sometimes I'm a disappointed father. But most of the time I like you guys. <laughs> Take care, guys. All right, I'm out.